My name is David Usai. I'm born in 1997 in a place called Ye, Central Equatorial South Sudan. Life in Ye was wonderful. I used to have fun, go to school, go to church. I remember I used to sing in the choir. Everything was just good. In the war of 2016, it was worsening. Then the forces that were fighting, they started spreading, going to villages, attacking people. So now my aunt was like, we have to leave the area. It took us around three days to reach the border. So when we reached the border, we were welcomed. We were taken to Rhinoke. From there, then I came to Arua. 2018, when I finished the senior six, my senior six exams, I was here in town. Then I got the job. I got a job of working in a casino. I worked there for close to two years. Then earlier, 2020, uh, when the pandemic terrorized the whole globe, the businesses were shut down, I lost the job. Earlier this year, I was sitting outside, then the youth leader of this area came around. He told me uh, this organization called AFSI, they are looking for unemployed youth. They want to help with skills that will make them to better their life. I got interested, so I took that a golden opportunity with two hands. Why Arua? Why Terigo? Why Madiokolo? Most of the refugees that we work with in the three different districts or the two different settlements, which is Rhino Camp and Invepi, they come from South Sudan. And some of them come as far as Congo. Most of them come when they're vulnerable, they don't have any skill. So by working with them in the Rural Employment Services Project, it at least gives them an upper hand to be able to best position themselves for whatever job opportunity can come along. They took us to Arua City, multi-purpose, tailoring school. Uh, the training was for six months, from January up to June, July. And the first one week, we were just learning how to pedal. Then stayed about two weeks, uh, started fitting, doing this basic repairing damaged clothes. Then now the third week and the fourth week, I uh, started learning cutting trousers when my time there expired because he saw I was really having that burning desire to learn. He told me to keep on coming, then from there he's going to start teaching me how to make this one of bed sheet to come with the drawings, uh, all that. We ensure that we promote what we call the localization model. Here we worked with the artisans very closely. These artisans are trained and skilled people who came all the way from Sudan. They have their skills, but they don't have the certificates. So we worked with them to build on what they have and ensure that they pass it on to their fellow refugees. Uh, I really got a lot of exposure with the help of APSI, an international labor organization. And the financial uh, help I got from them, I managed to purchase a sewing machine. I think the future is going to be great. I feel so grateful you have that chance of becoming your own boss because here there's no one ordering me and there's no fixed salary. The more you work hard and how you market yourself, the more money you get. As a qualified fashion designer, okay, I'm really grateful for the support I received from AFC, an international labor organization. It was really wonderful. Transforming someone from being unemployed to now starting his independent business. I will forever be grateful for them. <laughs>